Center's partners and stakeholders and of catering to the needs of the general public in keeping perishable commodities fresh and good quality for the long haul. And this is to further the PHTRC cost of ensuring quality and reducing losses and waste uh, in fresh produce. So um, our general public include viewers, uh, including extension workers, uh, local government representatives. We have progressive farmers and agribusiness entrepreneurs. We have students, teachers, researchers, colleagues, and uh, colleagues from government agencies, uh, both local and international. So for today's webinar, we are very uh, lucky to have with us an esteemed resource speaker from Korea's Rural Development Administration. This is actually his third time to grace a PHTRC webinar. Uh, he was first here uh, before the lockdown in 2017. He was here during the celebration of the PHTRC's 40th anniversary. And then just last year for our 45th anniversary, he, he was also one of our uh, resource person together with um, uh, renowned speakers from the University of California, Davis, and from Australia. No? So he's actually family to us. <laughs> family, PHTRC family, uh, he being our uh, FASI project, a program leader, and he has been with us during the milestone, our milestones, and this time, our first seminar, he is our first speaker for 2023, uh, and this will surely be an insightful, and shall we say, vegetable full session, because he'll be talking about uh, vegetables, so please stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, I am Deng Nahan, and I will be your host for today's seminar. Okay, just a few reminders to our participants. We have some house rules uh, flashed on screen. So first, we are concerned about your attendance, especially those who would like to have their e-certificates. They need to uh, register and have their names at the attendance list, and then we will have a Q&A portion and we will provide you with the link for the questions, which will be provided in the Zoom chat box. And for participants here in the lecture, in the training room, um, you may raise your hands to be acknowledged because we will appreciate having uh, like live questions. And only those who have completed and submitted the evaluation form uh, will receive the certificate. So there's no problem with those uh, attending personally. Okay, so, so to formally open today's program, let me call on our ever supportive and uh, as he says, chill, <laughs> Dean of the College of Agriculture and Food Science, Dr. Elpidio Agbisis Jr. Take it away, sir. Thank you, Ma'am Deng. Of course, to the director of the Post Harvest Horticulture Training and Research Center, Dr. Dermita Del Carmen, to our speaker for today, Dr. Ji Jang Kim, Senior Research Specialist. Welcome back to the Philippines, sir. And to the um, movers and innovators of PHTRC, to our friends, Partners, ladies and gentlemen, a pleasant and blessed afternoon to all. On behalf of the College of Agriculture and Food Science, I wish to welcome you, you all, and commend the organizers for today's event. This PHTRC Fresh Talks is the eighth installment of the series that aims to inform the public of the different knowledge on post-harvest such as technologies and techniques and other updates, not just here in the Philippines, as well from other countries, so that we can be at par with the different international standards. Knowing how post-harvest technologies can increase the value of new varieties of vegetables is important. In our case, there are, there's a lot of 
new vegetable varieties that are being developed or was developed to, to answer the multidimensional outcomes or needs of the different farmers. And aside from that, do you know that BT eggplant is now approved for propagation by the farmers? And next will be the mass production of it. So definitely there will be a lot of changes and innovations in terms of cross harvest. To Dr. Kim, thank you for giving us some of your time to share your expertise. For sure, we will learn a lot from you. Ad additionally, like the Philippines, agriculture contributes largely to the GDP of South Korea. We would like to know what post-harvest techniques do you have in South Korea, which we can apply in the Philippines, increasing the market value of our produce. To all the participants, may you learn a lot today, and please do not hesitate to ask questions. May all our wishes come true, towards a resilient, sustainable, and progressive agriculture industry. Hiraya Manawari to everyone. Thank you very much, uh, Dean Abisit. At this point, we would like, before anything else, uh, we would like to call on uh, Dr. Kim, uh, Dinag Visit, our director, for a short uh, in-person photo op, just to be sure that we fully document our proceedings now, okay? <laughs> we know that uh, Dinag Visit is very busy and he still has a class, so we make sure that uh, we have everything documented. Okay, thank you very much for that uh, quick photo op. So at this point, I would like to call on um, a PhD consultant, quote unquote, and uh, former PhDRC director to introduce our guest speaker. So may we call on Dr. Perdita Nuevo. Okay, good day everyone. Uh, but before I continue, allow me to tell you a brief history of how our paths with the speaker started some 10 years ago, which resulted in the production of post-harvest manuals for specific crops and eventually led to the formation of the International Afasi family. He was instrumental and also the program leader of the AFASI RDA project on the establishment of post-harvest manuals to improve the post-harvest handling of selected fruits and vegetables in Asia, as well as in Africa. And this project was a collaboration with the AFASI RDA, um, UPLB PHDRC, and the DA Bar. All, and this lasted for more than five years. Our special internationally renowned resource speaker for today's webinar is no other than Dr. Jigang Kim, Senior Research Scientist of the National Institute of Horticultural and Herbal Science of the Republic of Korea. Dr. Kim has 31 years of research experience in post-harvest technology of horticultural crops and fresh cut produce processing. He previously served as Director General of the Department of Horticultural Crop Research and he also served as Director of Post-Harvest Technology Division 
in NIHHS for six years. He also served as vice president of the Korean Society for Horticultural Science and the Korean Society for of International Agriculture. He has worked very hard to promote international collaboration for development of post-harvest technology. And he led the AFASI RDA project, as I have mentioned earlier, to reduce post-harvest losses of horticultural crops in Asian as well as in African countries through the international cooperation. He is now focusing on post-harvest management of alliums, allium vegetables for the last part of his service period. Ladies and gentlemen, let us all welcome Dr. Ji Gang Kim. Okay, thank you, Dr. Nuevo, for your wonderful <laughs> introduction. And it's my great pleasure to be here, PhTRC. Yeah. And uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, thank you, Dr. Agbisit and Dr. Domitar for organizing this seminar. And this morning, I was very happy to see many PhTRC friends. <laughs> and uh, finally, I could enjoy uh, Bukopai here. <laughs> One of my reasons to come to the Philippines, Los Banos Philippines, is fighting uh, Bukopai. But uh, yesterday and today after, uh, today before yesterday, no chance <laughs> to buy the Bukopai. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about relationship between breeding and post harvest technology. So the title is the role of post harvest technology in increasing the value of new varieties. Next. There are several issues in Korean horticultural industry, like your country or other country. First, abnormal weather damage. Next. And poor pest and disease occurrence. Nowadays, we have fire blight disease in apple and pear orchid. Next. These days, labor shortage is very serious problem in Korea. So number one priority, big issue is mechanization of vegetables. Next slide. And staple price is a big issue, like your country last year with the onion. Then we need improvement of storage system. Next. And we have an issue on demand for premium varieties. Next. Here we have a crop. That was a hot topic last month. Everybody knows, not only in the Philippines, in other Asian countries in the world, yeah, they uh, reported how much your onion price was high. We had also experience like this. Next. Before I come to the Philippines, yeah, I took a picture of onion, the left onion. I went to onion packing house uh, February 10th, so two weeks ago, still in good condition. And the light picture, the onion is now in my laboratory. That onion was stored for nine months. And then we took out onion to room temperature for five, eight days. Still, there is no sprouting. And looks okay. Next. How to store onions for up to 10 months without sprouting? In Korea, we store onions for up to 10 months because we harvest onion once. Then we need onion fully around. And we should store onion for up to 10 months. Next. How to store onions? Breeders say because the variety is excellent. But post-harvest technology say, no, 
because of improved postal technology, which is more influential, cultivar development or post harvest management? I think both. We need excellent varieties, also better cultivation system and post harvest management. But breeder, they say only excellent breeding. So today I'm going to talk about that. Next slide. Next. First, I will talk about challenges in horticultural R&D in Korea. Next. First challenge is, as I mentioned, labor saving production technology. Expansion of mechanization of field-based tools. Rice, the cultivation is almost mechanized, but the field-based tools like onion, garlic, uh, cabbage, chili pepper, very difficult to mechanize. There is a strong demand for mechanization. So we need to develop varieties for mechanized cultivation. For example, chili pepper, the variety that mature at the same time, then we can harvest many of uh, chili pepper. And also standardization of cultivation method. Farmers request uh, machinery industry you need to develop better machine. But the machinery industry, even though we develop better machine without standardization of your cultivation, very difficult to adopt. For example, a standardization for application of agricultural machinery, for example, uh, organic uh, garlic field in uh, Korea, Uisong city, they have three meter width. But the uh, Namhae city, 1.5 meters, and my area, Muan city, 2.1 meters. So each uh, production area has a different uh, cultivation field and cultivation system. So very uh, difficult to uh, adopt the machine, machinery. Next slide. Even though we need uh, standardization of uh, field for mechanization, uh, government and uh, local governments are trying to disseminate uh, field smart farm technology to promote uh, mechanization of field vegetable crops. So each county, uh, they have uh, mechanized demonstration field to let farmer encourage, uh, adopt, uh, apply the comprehensive mechanization. Field application of uh, comprehensive mechanization so far, we developed partial uh, mechanized uh, system. So uh, farmers, uh, when they need uh, uh, machinery for plotting or plant, uh, uh, plating or irrigation, they partially adapted. But uh, now we want to uh, apply comprehensive. During the full uh, process, we want to apply uh, mechanized uh, cultivation system. Next. And also labor saving technology in protected cultivation. We produce uh, all fruit vegetables such as tomato, melon, uh, cucumber, watermelon. Those are grown on the protected cultivation. Strawberry, tomato, we developed a technology so it doesn't cause uh, working hard, but uh, watermelon and Korean melon cultivation, it is protected, but cultivation is still not changing. As you can see, when they work, they need to bend. Then it can cause uh, some health problem. So uh, it causes uh, that kind of uh, health problem. So we need to develop technology for watermelon. So conventional hard work to vertical cultivation system. Then we can reduce uh, the health problem. So watermelon and oriental melon is our challenge to change the cultivation system. Next. A second challenge is energy efficient greenhouse technology because many of uh, many crops are grown in uh, greenhouse, 
then we need to save energy. Energy cost is high in Korea, about 30%, sometimes 40%. It is very uh, expensive. So we need to save the energy. So we are trying to develop a smart environment management. Uh, so optimal condition for temperature reduction in summer. So those are the pictures how we uh, to try uh, reduce the uh, energy cost. Next slide. And these days, one of the challenges is how we overcome high temperature. When we installed many greenhouse, it was to overcome cold weather. During winter season, we want to produce vegetables. But these days, since weather is changed, there is a, a longer period of hot temperature. So mm -hmm. during summertime, not easy to produce high quality vegetables. So we should overcome high temperature. So we have installed that kind of greenhouse, mammoth greenhouse. Uh, we call it whole and large greenhouse. Uh, as you can see, the height is about 15 meter. It's a plastic house. And the length and width is 50 times 30 or 40 meter. So the size of the greenhouse, plastic house is two thirds of soccer field. So very huge greenhouse. So we can reduce the temperature during summer season. So when I was there, I feel very comfortable, not too hot. During summer season, if I were in plastic normal house, I feel very hot with wet. But uh, with that uh, car of greenhouse, I can feel very comfortable. So left picture button, uh, strawberry, that is a strawberry greenhouse. We want to harvest strawberry even summer season. These days we harvest strawberry in winter season, but uh, with that kind of uh, greenhouse, we are trying to uh, harvest strawberry in summer. And as you can see, we harvest grape once a year, but uh, with that uh, greenhouse, we are trying to uh, like a hydroponic uh, grape cultivation system. And then last year, we could harvest two times with that uh, greenhouse, but still we are struggling with uh, cultivation technology with uh, that uh, greenhouse. Next slide. So we need more improved protective cultivation system. We have various types of uh, plastic greenhouse. Then uh, we need to uh, put uh, optimum uh, cultivation technology to meet the uh, various type of uh, plastic house. And also, these days we strongly uh, request farmers to adopt eco-friendly and uh, precision hydroponic technology. So far, we through the nutrition uh, used for hydroponic, but uh, we want to recycle the nutrition. That is one of our challenges. Next. And so the challenge is related to the topic of uh, today's presentation, uh, dissemination of excellent varieties. I belong to a government institute dealing with uh, horticulture and other countries belonging to uh, government and dealing with horticulture, majority of research group is uh, breeding. In Korea or other countries, they developed many varieties, so many varieties, but many of them are not used. So in Korea, the media reports that Korean seed spread is insufficient. Government invested a lot in developing new varieties, but the variety is not disseminated well. No farmers use new varieties developed by my institute or government supported institute. So we need to expand the supply of domestic good varieties. Next. This is an example of a selection of new varieties. 
when they select new varieties of onion or garlic, only breeder and pro producer attend, join the, uh, the meeting to select varieties. So they only consider productivity oriented breed selection without market people or without both sides technologists, they may miss many things. So we need to communicate with, uh, they need to communicate with the consumer group, including host type technologists. Next slide. Next. Direction to develop new varieties. I think the same as other countries. The breeding direction of horticultural crops, variety for year round, high quality and stable production. And the goal of breeding, the same, to strengthen global competitiveness and promotion of consumer-oriented varieties. So we uh, had a very big project called uh, Golden Seed Project launched by uh, government. And uh, there was a collaboration of national institutes, university, and private breeder to develop new indigenous seeds for horticultural crops. So those are crops we invested a lot. Uh, to reduce country seed imports and also increase export of seed. We imported seeds from uh, out of Korea, so we wanted to reduce import of the seed. So those are new cultivars of chili pepper, paprika, watermelon, and plum. We developed other varieties, many varieties. Next. Now, I'll tell you successful case of uh, dissemination of domestic varieties. We did the effective dissemination of domestic strawberry varieties. Until 2005, Korean varieties, 9.2%, only 9%. Other 90% is Japanese variety. But 2021, two years ago, 96, almost 97% share is Korean varieties. These may maybe 98 or 99%. So very difficult to see Japanese variety, strawberry variety in Korea. When I was young, all strawberries are Japanese varieties, but these Korean varieties. Next slide. Now I'll tell you the status of Korean, Korean uh, strawberry. This is a picture of a Japanese calling player during 2018 Winter Olympic game uh, held in Pyeongchang, Korea. And the uh, uh, Japanese player was very famous even uh, in Korea. And one day she was interviewed by a Korean uh, broadcast. And uh, whenever she has a break time, she always eating strawberry. So when she was interviewed, she said, Korean strawberries are very delicious. So she was eating Korean strawberries a lot. After broadcast, the Minister of Agriculture in Japan was very angry at her. And uh, the minister, Japanese minister uh, strongly mentioned that Korean strawberry varieties their parents are Japanese varieties. And we responded, we responded, your strawberries, your parents, the strawberries' parents was from out of Japan. They knew that. So there was a serious argument between uh, Japan and Korea. So it was called the strawberry war <laughs> between Japan and Korea. <laughs> And these days, when uh, foreigners uh, visit Korea during winter season, many of them visit a uh, strawberry farm to enjoy uh, fresh strawberry. And we export strawberry to many countries, even uh, Philippines too. Next. How we make this sharing, uh, using uh, Korean varieties? We developed varieties and also cultivation system. When we uh, respond to the Japan, we developed better cultivation systems. 
That's why Korean strawberry is, is sweet and good, has good flavor. Uh, we developed new varieties and we developed a high bed cultivation system. And also post harvest technology. Without post harvest technology, uh, Korean strawberry cannot be popular uh, in many countries. Okay, next slide. So we developed many varieties. Next. But we have a challenge in uh, strawberry variety development. When uh, visitors taste Korean uh, strawberry in Korea, they say good. But uh, so we exported Korean strawberry to other countries. But the local people, when they look at Korean varieties, there are some quality problems. Softening or decay. Then they think Korean strawberry looks not good. They don't want to taste it. So we, are, uh, we have developed post harvest management to export strawberries. Next slide. Kimchi cabbage is very important, essential uh, vegetables in Korea. 100% uh, varieties are Korean varieties. So we have developed many kimchi varieties and uh, we export the seed. But these days, we are developing new varieties to meet different tastes and what to make uh, different purpose. Next slide. We have challenges in creating consumption of kimchi cabbage. The left picture, that was uh, uh, typical uh, uh, Korean uh, dinner. And you can see two types of kimchi. But uh, on the right, you only see one kimchi. It means young, general young people, they do not eat kimchi as much as I did. So less uh, kimchi consumption. Then we need to create uh, consumption of kimchi cabbage with new varieties. So like uh, kimchi cabbage used for salad or pickle or functional ingredient. And also uh, when we have overproduction or when we have surplus, uh, surplus of kimchi cabbage, we need to export. Then uh, export expansion with the improved post types handling is necessary. We exported kimchi cabbage, but as you can see, we found some quality problems. They didn't adopt any post types management. Then they exported. So they found many problems. Then they asked us how they solve it. So they needed to adopt post type technology. Next slide. We developed uh, new uh, varieties of kiwi fruit. Still, green kiwi is uh, popular, but uh, these days consumers want to have yellow or red uh, color of uh, kiwi fruit, and also high sugar content and functional ingredients. Uh, those are very important to let uh, consumer eat Korean varieties. Next slide. But there was obstacles to the spread of new varieties. They produce new varieties of kiwi very well. The quality was okay, but the improper ripening technique, due to improper ripening technique, they have their uh, kiwi fruit, the sugar content is not high. And uh, there is a lack of cultivation and uh, post type technology for each varieties. Red key fruit, yellow key fruit, and different varieties have different post type physiology. But industry, they do not know that. So they do uh, same treatment for different uh, varieties of key fruits. That's why there were uh, many uh, quality problems during long-term strategy. So we tried to export promotion of new varieties. We exported new varieties uh, named Sweet Gold to Singapore and Japan. 
but we found some quality problem because they didn't adopt optimal post service management. After that, they have changed post service system. Next slide. I don't know if you are familiar with uh, Plum Coats, uh, Plum and uh, Applicant Hybrid, and we developed uh, varieties of Plum Coat, uh, which has high sugar content and good fragrance. When the fruits are mature, tastes and the flavor is very good. The problem is very short self life, very short. Next slide. So there was obstacles to the spread of plum coat fruits because of very short self ripe fruit. So industry, uh, they wanted to uh, advertise their plum coats uh, to market, but market people were interested in the fruit, but they couldn't provide uh, the plum coats and also the fruit falls very well when full ripening. If the fruit has a fruit is matured, the quality is very good, but it cannot be distributed to market because before it is matured, the fruit falls well. So there were many losses and also uh, left quality change after harvest. So very difficult to distribute their new varieties to the market. And many consumers didn't know what a plum coat fruit is. So not well known in the market. That's why that plum coat producers, they planted that fruit, but they had very difficult to sell their uh, fruits. So there was a uh, obstacles. Next slide. And tomato. In general, we have two kinds of tomato, cherry tomato and normal tomato. Uh, for normal tomato, the domestic varieties, the share is very low. But cherry tomato, 90% of cherry tomatoes are Korean varieties. But regular tomato, normal tomato, 30%. So we want to increase the uh, share of uh, regular tomato. And the pictures uh, are developed by institute or uh, private company. And we have research on uh, tomato variety development. It's a collaboration uh, between uh, my institute and uh, breeding company. Next slide. Tomato was not a top 10 vegetables in Korea in the past, but these days, uh, tomato is one of the important vegetables uh, and uh, in terms of the production amount and value of crops, tomato is number seven or number six variety uh, uh, vegetables. So it means uh, tomato industry is increased and uh, more people consume tomato. And we are uh, trying to develop Korean varieties to let Korean consumers eat uh, domestic varieties. Next slide. Now I will tell you about post harvest management, how the post harvest technology contributed to increasing in value of new varieties. Next. First, we develop a post harvest handling manual suitable for different distribution. These are picture of post harvest procedure of tomato. Uh, after we harvest uh, tomato farmers, after they pick the tomatoes, they pack into plastic created. After that, they transport tomato to packing house first. So during summer season, two or three times uh, transport to packing house. Uh, after uh, arrival in a packing house, they collect and they inspect, but all tomatoes are not uh, there is no bad tomatoes because when farmers pick tomato, they always pick good, good tomato. Different size, different color is okay, but only good tomato. So uh, 
Uh, tomatoes are uh, sorted and graded uh, by equipment, and then uh, tomatoes are packed and transported. During the process, how many times Korean workers touch tomatoes? Only two times. When they pick tomato and when they pack tomato, they touch tomato only two times. But the other post harvest uh, handling procedure, they don't need to touch tomatoes. But in other countries, uh, farmers who are distributors, who are market people, they touch tomato many times. So that may cause uh, contamination or quality problem. Next slide. An application of post harvest technology for export. As I mentioned, Korean strawberry is one of very important export crop. Then we need to improve post harvest management to export uh, strawberry well. So we developed uh, improved technology for strawberry export. If the strawberry has a soft texture, but the strawberry has very good flavor and high sugar content, then we need that kind of uh, post harvest treatment, combination of uh, CO2 and CO2 treatment, and also modified atmosphere packaging. Then we can export strawberries more. Next slide. We developed uh, kimchi cabbage varieties. Then, but our challenge is how to create consumption. Export is one of the way. And we did field demonstration for kimchi cabbage export. Uh, industry uh, applied uh, post harvest technology for exporting. Uh, since they uh, had a problem with the exported kimchi cabbage, they are now adopting improved uh, post harvest technology. But kimchi cabbage is harvested in uh, different seasons spring, summer, fall, and winter season. It has different characteristics. So post harvest management is different to meet each uh, harvesting season. Okay, next slide. Uh, let me tell you uh, what I uh, did uh, last year. Uh, when I uh, joined the new institute, at the time, the price of onion was very low, very low. So farmers demonstrated to increase the price of onion. But in market, there was a surplus of uh, onion. So very difficult to increase the price of onion. So I tried to export uh, onion, uh, harvested early uh, season. But first time, uh, industry didn't want to export the onion because onion harvested in early season, it has a soft texture. So very difficult to maintain quality. So they never uh, exported that kind of uh, onion to other countries. But as long as we adapt improved post technology to meet the uh, varieties or the uh, early harvested onion, then I believed we could export. Finally, uh, industry, they uh, applied, adopted the uh, post harvest management to export uh, Singapore. Next slide. So after exported onions uh, arrived in Singapore, there was no decayed onion. There was no physical damaged onion. It looks okay and physically okay. So uh, the onion was sold in Singapore without much problem. After that, they request to import onions from my area. So we could export, but uh, we had another problem because uh, after that, uh, onion price was very high. Uh, so because of uh, price uh, <laughs> situation, uh, we stopped to export onion uh, last December, last December, but uh, we may uh, export it again uh, this year. Anyway, as long as we apply improved uh, post harvest management to that kind of onion, we found that 
we can export it. Next. So we have disseminated a post service handling manual for export. Post service handling manual for domestic market and also specialized post service manual for export market. It should be uh, uh, different. So we developed uh, customized technology. Also, the manual has two types of manual, sea transport or air transport. In case of strawberries, many of them are uh, exported by air, but uh, sometimes when we have uh, overproduction, a lot of production, we export uh, strawberries by ship. Then we need two types of uh, post types handling manuals. Okay, next slide. I mentioned that uh, we, uh, our uh, kiwi fruit had a quality problem. So we are uh, using uh, safe and easy ripening technology uh, for the kiwi fruits and also ostrich and persimmon. In Korea, ostrich and persimmon uh, is dried uh, to make a dried persimmon, or uh, we make a soft uh, persimmon. Then there is no ostrich and uh, uh, taste so we can eat. So we need uh, softening uh, technology for the oxygen persimmon. But we used some chemicals, it was not good. So these days uh, we uh, developed ethylene uh, generating pad and uh, industry use that, then we can make a soft uh, oxygen persimmon and key fruit. Next slide. Post types management and uh, marketing support for plum coat. Plum coat uh, farmers, they demonstrated RDA, you developed varieties. So we expected it would be popular. So we planted your varieties, but nobody wants to buy our plum coat. So they demonstrated that we should do something to solve that problem. So first activities, we determined optimum harvesting time and cell ripe for each varieties. We developed four varieties and uh, we determined the harvesting time. When is it good to harvest for the market? Then later, uh, farmers followed that. And also media promotion and marketing support is necessary. And these days, their plum coat entered the distribution market, even department store, so they can sell plum coat at high price. And also, uh, there are some uh, non-marketable fruits. Then nowadays, many uh, coffee franchises they use the unmarketable uh, plum coat to make juice. The next slide. My institute developed new garlic named Hongsan varieties. You know, that variety, very easy to harvest. Even very old people, they can harvest very easy. And also, uh, it can be grown in anywhere in Korea, even northern part and southern part, very easy to cultivate, not much disease. So very easy. And also, this cultivar has high allin ingredients. So very pungent, very good. But one problem is there is a green color at the tip of garlic clove. So Korean consumers, what this market people, they think that variety is already quality changed. It's a fresh one, but because of green color, nobody think that is fresh. So, we had a problem with that color. We couldn't remove the color. <laughs> but uh, it turned weakness into strengths by post harvest management. We advertised green color of the green color at the tip of garlic globe 
it means it's a Korean variety. Other varieties are from Spain and China. It's a Korean variety. It's a symbol of Korean varieties. You are patriot if you buy <laughs> uh, that varieties. And also, we did uh, promotion of post office management, advantage, and marketing. And uh, these days, many consumers buy peeled garlic, not intact garlic, because it is not easy to peel garlic. So we developed uh, post harvest processing uh, technology to meet the varieties, peeling technology without much uh, physical damage. Then now uh, they can uh, sell it. Okay, next slide. This is a fresh cup. Apple is getting popular. Young children, they do not eat full intact apple. As long as uh, mother peel and cut uh, apple, then they can eat. And we developed a variety. Actually, the breeder, uh, when he uh, breeded that variety, he didn't consider a uh, fresh cut <laughs> processing. But uh, after he developed the varieties, we found that that varieties, the apple is not too sensitive to uh, browning. So it can be used for uh, fresh cut apples. As you can see, no browning. So now, uh, we are growing more uh, the varieties, and then it can be used for uh, fresh cut apples. Okay, next slide. We developed varieties, but uh, not local uh, people was interested in that varieties. But one variety, we had a collaboration. So they uh, planted uh, several varieties, what we developed, and they selected very good varieties for that area. Uh, they produce uh, semi-processed uh, pickled kimchi. These days, uh, when, we, when we make a kimchi, it was difficult if we purchase intact uh, kimchi cabbage. We need to remove outer leaves and uh, we should wash uh, kimchi cabbage. But so these days, consumers, they buy semi-processed uh, kimchi cabbage. After they buy, they just put ingredients, then they can make kimchi. So the uh, local area, uh, name of uh, Kwesan, they and we developed varieties for their uh, area. And now they named uh, the varieties and it is getting popular in that area. Okay, next slide. Now I'll tell you uh, future direction and the collaboration. We are still uh, have uh, challenges to develop uh, varieties suitable for consumption trends, consumption trends, the selection, and commercialization of varieties suitable for export and consumption trend. So we have developed many uh, strawberry varieties, but some varieties are popular in some area when some uh, generation, well, when we export varieties, it depends on the consumer of the country. So we should select uh, promising cultivar for the uh, different export market. And we need to develop easy to eat varieties and uh, we need to support for consumption. Pear and uh, sweet persimmon. The production is not like in the past because not many consumers are interested in eating pear and sweet persimmon because they need to eat peel. For apple, people can eat even peel, no problem. People can eat washed intact apple, but the pear and sweet persimmon, they should peel the skin of uh, those fruits. So uh, we are developing uh, 
pair cultivars that can eat the field. So skin is very soft, but flesh is crunchy. So we need to develop uh, the varieties and post hub technology. Technologies, they should select the varieties and they need to develop uh, fresh cut processing technology to meet the varieties. Even uh, sweet persimmon too. Next slide. Um, we have a very simple uh, industry. Uh, in many countries, uh, fresh cut processing plant, they process fresh cut tomato slice and they distribute the tomato slice to franchise restaurant like McDonald's or KFC. But in Korea, fresh cut processing plant, they just provide washed intact tomato, not tomato slice. So the restaurant, they cut tomato to make hamburger or to use for uh, salad. So this is one of our challenge because of varieties. So uh, in the near future, we have tomato varieties and it is used uh, for uh, fresh cut uh, tomato slice. These days, fresh cut watermelon is getting popular in the world. During summer season, many consumers buy uh, fresh cut tomato, uh, watermelon, but also there are many claims. The left picture of a watermelon, the color is very red. It means it's not much fresh and there are seed, the consumer do not want to eat the kind of watermelon. So this time we need varieties which has seedless, has firm texture and cold tolerance. When a fresh cut out watermelon is distributed, it's a cold situation. So uh, many varieties are very sensitive to a cold temperature. Next slide. And one of our challenges, uh, labor saving technology development is about uh, fresh cut uh, processing technology. Cherry tomato is one of the uh, popular fresh cut uh, item, but uh, many workers, they remove calyx manually because uh, if the uh, stand the, uh, without uh, the calyx, if we distribute to that tomatoes, consumers think that it's not fresh. But in uh, USA and European countries, many countries, they uh, distribute uh, a tomato without calyx, a cherry tomato, I mean. Uh -huh. So there is a lot of lab uh, labor work to remove tomato calyx. And fresh cut grape is also a popular uh, item, but industry, when they cut the stem, very difficult to cut stems accurately. If they cut the stems accurately, it takes time. And also there is a physical damage. So they gave up. So these days, they just cut above of the uh, calyx uh, of the stem. So there is a uh, uh, remained uh, stem after cut. So it is not edible apart. So there is uh, one of our problems. So we need uh, to develop or select varieties for fresh cut cherry tomato and grape. Cherry tomato has a firm texture, but the calyx falls well so during Washing or packaging, the calyx removes naturally. And it is good uh, for the fresh cut uh, product. And so now we are selecting that kind of uh, varieties. And for grape, easily removing the calyx and a berry, uh, and the grape has a firm texture, then we are selecting uh, that kind of varieties. And also we need to develop post type technology for cherry tomato, calyx removal, and grape destemming uh, with physical or 
chemical treatment. Next slide. We have developed many varieties of onion, but still uh, onion industry, they prefer Japanese varieties for long-term storage. Short-term storage, they do not care. They use Korean varieties, but uh, long-term storage, the industrial people do not use uh, Korean varieties. So we need to prove how much, how many uh, months Korean variety can be stored. So we are doing that uh, development of optimum storage system with onion industrial people to show Korean varieties uh, can be stored for up to 10 months. But still, we are struggling with that uh, co collaboration. And self-right extension for exporting Hongsan field garlic. Uh, that varieties, we advertise this uh, uh, Korean varieties and the uh, local uh, producer, they want to export that varieties. Uh, then they need uh, better post harvest management system to extend the self life of that varieties. Okay, next slide. And we need a collaboration between breeder and uh, post harvest technology. We have uh, Variety Development and Dissemination Committee. But many members are farmer, breeder, full sale market, but supermarket people sometimes. So previously, that committee members, producer oriented members, the majority of the members are farmers as the producers. But today and future, the committee should be consumer-oriented members. So I strongly request uh, breeders, uh, when you select uh, new varieties, you should invite post hoc technologies or uh, e-commerce, fresh delivery platform, export vendor, processing or packing house, post hoc technology. You should invite when you select uh, new varieties. So breeding target in the past, productivity or quality, but these days distribution and convenience are also very important breeding target. Next slide. So these days they need to uh, include SNS influencer like YouTube or and also post types management, market handling export. Then they may uh, distribute or uh, extend, uh, disseminate their new varieties to industry. Next slide. Okay. Um, now I'll tell you about uh, one of the important role of post types management. We have lessons. In 2010, uh, 12 years ago, uh, 13 years ago, one Korean cabbage head was 10 US dollar, like uh, onion price in the Philippines, 10 US dollar, next slide. But the price went up, 13 US dollar. One cabbage was 13 US dollar. So many Korean people complained especially the housewives. <laughs> they complained a lot. Why kimchi cabbage was so expensive? Government should do something to decrease the price. Finally, Korean government imported kimchi cabbage. Next slide. At the time, there was a waiting in line from 5 a.m to buy cheap cabbage. But you know, the supermarket opened at 10 a.m. They were waiting for five hours to purchase kimchi cabbage. Next slide. So this, no, no, people. So this lady was very happy with the three cabbage head. She could buy kimchi cabbage. Next slide. But later, 
things turned around like that. The price is very low. So farmers, they discard it. That's true. So we need to develop uh, effective supply and demand control uh, policy. Next slide. So this is a uh, situation in uh, the Philippines and uh, many people uh, in the world know the uh, situation. The role of postal technology is providing safe and uh, nutritious food. You agree? And also increase food availability because of reduced uh, post ops losses and value addition of horticulture crops. As long as you make commercialized products, uh, then farmers can get more income. But these days, we should consider supply and demand control. Many people think that that is a cultivation, uh, sec uh, cultivation sector, not for uh, uh, post harvest sector, but also uh, they should consider a post harvest man management. Uh, we need to expand the storage facilities and also support for research on supply and demand control of agricultural crops. Before I uh, came to the Philippines, I joined the check-in meeting on supply and demand control held in Ministry of Agriculture. There were many uh, producer leaders and also uh, association, but I also joined to check the onion and garlic, the, the storage condition is now, uh, I should mention that. Then they can consider how many losses and how many uh, production this year. So uh, when you consider supply and demand control, post harvest management is one of the important uh, sector to uh, discuss the policy. Next slide. Okay, thank you for your attention. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Kim, for that very interesting and insightful uh, presentation and uh, for sharing with us uh, the role that post service technology plays in adding value to new vegetable varieties. So your presentation is really very relevant nowadays, especially in the Philippines. And uh, we hope that uh, we shed some light and even uh, give uh, some uh, well, how do you say that uh, recommendations or suggestions also? We don't know who are uh, in this uh, Zoom uh, webinar from uh, government and policy, but we hope that uh, this particular presentation gave uh, some uh, light, shed light on some of these issues. So again, uh, for those who are just in, uh, you can still, I don't know, via Zoom. You know? Uh, welcome back to PHTRC Fresh Talks uh, semi uh, webinar episode eight, and uh, for this particular part, we will have an open forum. And for the participants, the floor is now open for questions to our resource person. For Zoom participants, you may send your questions using Google Form provided in the Zoom chat box, and. Uh, as of the moment, we have 169 Zoom participants and 41 persons on FB. So, and uh, of course, live, uh, we have, how many? <laughs> we have a couple of persons here also with us, some students, students, huh? no? Okay, so at this point, we would like to call on uh, another PHTRC consultant, quote unquote, <laughs> and former director, who will be facilitating this segment of the program. Uh, let's call on Dr. Edradina Seran. Good afternoon. So we have come to the question and answer uh, of this very, very enlightening, interesting, relevant seminar of Dr. Jigang Kim. 
So uh, I have here several questions uh, for you, sir. And uh, one of these uh, questions is uh, this one, what is the role of post-harvest in inflations of uh, varieties on vegetables? So I think uh, this was uh, from other countries, uh, question from other countries. What is the role of post-harvest inflations of the varieties? Uh, on vegetables. I think uh, he was asking uh, the role of post-harvest in, let's say, increasing the price or decreasing the price of the, our vegetables. Um, I think um, if there is a supply of vegetables, uh, without varieties, then uh, the price would be very low. Then uh, if you want to make a stable price, uh, government should invest in establishment of storage system. Then they uh, can store the surplus of vegetables. Uh, and after that, if the price is still low, uh, if the price is uh, getting high, I mean, then they can release. Well, if the uh, price is too low, they can just throw. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the price, even 10% of uh, shortage or 10% of surplus, it can influence the price a lot. So uh, there should be a strategy, uh, big scale uh, storage system, uh, then it may uh, good to make a stable price of the vegetables. That is my answer. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, the next uh, question is uh, whether the new varieties that Korea developed are GMOs, genetically modified. Uh, the, uh, we have a uh, government <laughs> law, so commercially no GMO, yeah, non GMO. Yeah. So, uh, I am also. I would like to ask question in re in in regard to the development of uh, these varieties. No? So, uh, what is the role of the government uh, and the private sector? and the breeder with regard to the development of uh, these new varieties. Uh, is it solely funded by the government or is it a, uh, let's say, an initiative of, uh, of course, I, we know from your uh, this presentation that it is an initiative of, uh, from, from, the, from the consumers because, they will show that uh, you have a very poor, uh, initially they, you have very poor variety. So it is consumer uh, demand uh, thing that happens during uh, development of a new variety. So, but, but how is this being done? Okay. Um, government uh, was aware of the importance of varieties. They recognized oh, how much uh, development of excellent varieties is important. So government made a strong policy. It's a very, uh, very prior, uh, has high priority to uh, disseminate new varieties. Then, oh, but Korean uh, seed company, not like uh, European or American companies, so small and middle scale company. So, uh, without government uh, investment, uh, they are not able to develop new varieties by themselves. That's why government uh, invests in uh, developing new varieties with a big, um, big budget. So government supported for that. It was a long-term project. Uh, government knows that uh, with a short-term project, like three or five years, it is not enough to develop new varieties. So this was a very long-term project. Even long-term project, it's finished. 
So now government is trying to find another project. Uh, so that's why uh, they uh, encouraged the uh, breeding company to uh, develop new varieties. Yep. So, uh, thank you for that. Uh, as a uh, follow up, uh, we, we here in the Philippines, for example, uh, the academe uh, uh, is, is, uh, is or has uh, that. Uh, staff or uh, staff complement uh, to to develop varieties that uh, we have a breeder or a scientist uh, geneticist um, so is that true also in your country that uh, uh, breeding is also supported by the academy When we uh, had that kind of uh, national project, uh, private company, private breeding company, and uh, university and uh, institute, it was open. So all uh, uh, stakeholders related to breeding uh, joined the, uh, the project. And there are uh, many uh, kinds of uh, uh, crops. So. Some company was special uh, has a specialized for the crop. Then uh, there was a group to develop uh, varieties of uh, certain uh, crops. So there was no uh, there was not much difficulty to uh, collaborate uh, among uh, those groups. Okay, thank you. Is there any follow up on this aspect, uh, the development of varieties? Uh, we are in academ academe, and uh, so it seems that uh, there is a, a very uh, poor or weak linkage between the academe and the uh, and the seed companies, as well as although the government provides provides some form of uh, funds uh, for breeding purposes, but very limited. Okay. Yes, doctor. What is the process of uh, registering new varieties in Korea? Because in here, we have uh, to go through a very tedious process before uh, you come up with the registered varieties for dissemination. Thank you. Hmm. Thank you. Um, actually, I'm a post technologist. <laughs> I, I was not much interested in uh, registering new varieties, but you know, uh, after a breeder uh, developed new varieties, uh, they apply for registration uh, operated by uh, central government. And my institute uh, holds the, uh, com uh, the com uh, yeah, committees. Yeah. So once a year, for well, some time, uh, not regularly, but in general, once a year, uh, we have a committee to inspect, uh, to uh, examine the, uh, the variety can be commercialized or not. We, uh, uh, we, we evaluate the varieties, then they decide to uh, register the varieties as new uh, cultivars. That is uh, our uh, Registration system, yeah. <laughs> Actually, not because uh, nobody knows if the uh, new varieties can be uh, popular. So, uh, if there is not much uh, defects of the varieties, they adapt. Uh, to register the varieties. That's why 
we develop any varieties, but only few uh, varieties uh, commercialized. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Uh, the next uh, question is oh, is there someone else? Uh, yes. <laughs> Hello, good afternoon, sir. I'm Jen Mengo, from the Institute of Land Reading. And Ma'am Sarah no, um, mentioned earlier the relationship between the academe and the uh, private companies. And yes, it is true that there's um, sometimes a missing link because um, particularly in the Institute of Land Reading, we are, our varietal development is toward the open pollinated varieties. And most of the private companies are geared toward the um, hybrid development because it is more of expensive for the academy to produce it or to, to go there. And I just want to ask if there is some, you mentioned earlier that there's a problem in terms of, of adoption of Korean varieties. Is there also some uh, differences on the adoption in terms of open pollinated varieties and um, hybrid varieties in your country because here in the Philippines the farmers are more of hybrid varieties in hybrid varieties in their farm than the open pollinated varieties because of the high yield. So thank you. Thank you. I wish I would bring uh, breeders <laughs> to answer to your question. Uh, as long as I know, <laughs> we use uh, hybrid. Yeah, 100%, uh, I think. Yeah. Open polarized. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. But uh, uh, these days, very low or very difficult to see uh, like that. So farmers, they just uh, buy uh, seed from the uh, company. Yeah. Or like uh, garlic, they, they uh, just get uh, the seed uh, uh, seed by themselves, but uh, uh, other crops, uh, yeah, yeah. Most of them uh, hybrid, yeah. So are, are are the green garlic uh, or is the green garlic variety well well uh, is this, uh, accepted uh, accepted now in your country? <laughs> there are two groups. Some groups they prefer green garlic because it has high functional ingredients, but the, the other group they do not treat as garlic. They consider that garlic is not good because of the green uh, green uh, color. So still, uh, the producing area uh, for the garlic they should advertise more. But uh, it is getting better. Uh, consumer understand the uh, characteristics of, of the varieties. But still, we need to market uh, advertise more. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, the next question is about uh, infrastructure. And it says that I was intrigued by the design of the structure of the greenhouse, specifically the height of the roof from the ground. Do you have a standard? Do they have a standard height from the ground to the roof for a certain ground? Can I see the, can I see the question again? Okay. Yeah. I think it, uh, the question I mentioned about uh, structure of the greenhouse, uh, the large and tall, yeah, yeah. Um, nowadays, uh, we, are, we can uh, make the uh, part of uh, the materials to make a standardization of greenhouse. Uh, before that, we used uh, uh, like a manually uh, 
we need a very, very long pipe, very thick long pipe, but uh, it cannot be uh, commercially, uh, uh, it cannot be commercially uh, made. So it costs a lot. But these days, uh, we can uh, make the part of the materials. Uh, so it is not much expensive compared to the past. But uh, one technology, how to uh, cover the uh, plastic, it was very difficult to uh, work. But uh, these days we developed, uh, so we have a part of uh, plastic. So now we can, uh, how can, I forgot the name of the use. Anyway, uh, we can make, uh, there is a, uh, there are uh, many uh, materials that can, uh, can I explain? Mm. Yeah, staple it, it's like a staple it. So uh, it, it is not easy to explain, uh, but uh, as long as you can see the, uh, like the design of the greenhouse, you may uh, have an idea how to, uh, uh, install the greenhouse and still the cost is high, uh, a little higher than uh, glass greenhouse. But these days almost the same, but uh, uh, we can make a higher and larger greenhouse compared to a glass greenhouse. That's why uh, during summer season, uh, there is an advantage to reduce the temperature. Yeah. So thank you. So uh, the other question is uh, this. It is vi very vital for the veg vegetable to have a proper post-service technology because even the new variety have good results in production and it does not it is it is useless because we know that vegetables are perishable and the end line result for the production is to consume by the consumers um what I, okay so there is actually no question for that but it's just a comment anyway uh <clears throat> the question next question is what variety of cherry tomato that you recommend mm that have longer shelf life. So it's there in your presentation. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, uh, so they have their own developed variety for the cherry tomatoes. Oh, um, yeah. You know, uh, many people think that uh, there is no need to apply uh, post type technology for leafy vegetables or very perishable vegetables because soon they uh, deteriorated. So no need to uh, apply post type management, but that's why we need post type technology to extend the cell life of those perishable uh, vegetables. We, uh, for example, we have lettuce. Sometimes there is rains, there are rain, there is rains that very difficult to uh, put, uh, harvest and uh, distribute. We should uh, store the lettuce for a couple of, day, a couple of days. If we do not uh, adopt uh, post office management, it's just, just thrown and they need to discard. But as long as they adopt post office technology, lettuce can uh, maintain quality for up to one month. So we don't need to store uh, lettuce for one month, but only after a couple of days, they can sell lettuce uh, to the market. That's why uh, even perishable uh, vegetables, we should uh, apply for some management. Yeah. Thank you. Mm. This is another question. Is there some sort of recommendations to uh, avert uh, the situation where the problem is the lack of infrastructure in the field, specifically the use of cold storage facility, so part, the facility that our Filipino farmers can afford? Uh, 
which means that uh, he or she is asking whether there are certain technologies that we can use uh, in, uh, instead of uh, making use of cold storage. I think PHTRC is now doing that <laughs> with the solar energy cooling system. So this is uh, one of the research to <laughs> solve that. Uh, actually, in many tropical countries, it's very difficult to install uh, cold storage room. So some uh, area, they install uh, like a simple uh, cooling uh, facilities without energy. Uh, there are different types of structure and different materials and uh, some, but I forgot the name of the materials. Uh, I have a picture of uh, those facilities installed in uh, African countries or tropical countries. Uh, after harvest uh, uh, vegetables, they just put the vegetables into that uh, facilities, but that facility is not used for long-term storage only for short term uh, storage, so like a temporary storage, then that kind of uh, cooler can be used. Thank you. Regarding the initial problem with maintaining the quality of onions for the export market, how long did it take for you to develop the right post-service technology. <laughs> uh, uh, regarding the initial problem of maintaining the quality of onions for export, your ex you, you export, how long did it take for you to develop the right post-service technology so that you can export? Okay, uh, onion is very important crops in the world. And uh, in Korea, we harvest onion only once. That's why we store onion for up to 10 months. We need to uh, long-term storage of onion. That's why we have developed a lot of times uh, to store uh, longer. Uh, so these days, uh, we do not have much problem, but uh, there are different types of onion, early harvested and uh, uh, middle harvest and uh, late harvest onion, and different uh, pre-cooling system and different storage system. We have tested many things. So we have an idea how to solve whenever we have a, a certain situation. So when we export uh, early harvest onion, we didn't try, but we have, can have an idea how to apply what kind of uh, technology is good for that varieties. Because that varieties has very soft texture, not like late harvest onion. Late harvest onion, it has a firm texture. So uh, we applied absorption paper to uh, absorb water from uh, the onion, and also that onion, it has soft texture, so we need like uh, buffer materials to prevent physical damage. That is one uh, technology uh, we didn't try for that onion. And also, uh, if we stack onions a lot, it may have physical damage. So we use pallet. Other onions, we do not use pallet. We just stack onions. It's a bulk uh, transportation system because they use uh, cost. But for early harvest onion without uh, palletizing, very difficult to prevent physical damage. So those, uh, that is also one uh, option. And the other option, uh, optimum curing for the onion. Uh, when we uh, distribute uh, the early harvest onion for domestic market, industry, they do not cure. Uh, they do not uh, cure, only one day curing. But uh, to export uh, that onions, uh, we need seven days curing. So uh, we uh, approved that kind of uh, technique for the uh, cultivar, even though we didn't try. Uh, but we 
have an idea what are good uh, technique for the uh, onion export. That is, uh, uh, that is from uh, long, uh, long time experience. So for that soft variety that you have or early maturing, uh, do you have uh, uh, what what was the temperature uh, used during export? Temperature range for long term storage. Okay, mm, when you export onion uh, industry. They used 15 degrees Celsius strategy. Then they found uh, quality problems a lot. It depends on uh, curing condition and uh, harvesting season. If onion is cured very well, and also if onion, uh, the firmness is very good, you don't need to refrigerate transport. But it depends on the transport period. So we have many uh, experience. So if the onion is, uh, so when we decide the temperature, we should consider the uh, onion, uh, uh, status, status of onion condition. But in general, these days uh, we use one degree Celsius temperature when we export onions, then there is not much uh, quality problem. But problem is, uh, after we export onion to Singapore or Vietnam or other countries, there are just very serious water condensation because onion is from one degree Celsius. So when he exported that, uh, the buyers, they didn't remove the water condensation. So they found quality problems. Many of onions decayed. So these days we, uh, already inform them and nowadays they know how to remove a water condensation. So one degree Celsius now we are using, yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, so how effective is the post-harvest post -harvest technology to other varieties of fruits and vegetables? Um, so do you want to answer that? How effective is the post-harvesting technology to other varieties of fruits and vegetables in general? How effective? How effective is post-harvest handling technology to other varieties of fruits and vegetables? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So all fresh produce, uh, fresh horticultural produce needs post harvest, the upper plate and uh, right, the upper plate uh, post harvest technology. Okay. Uh, is there also registered and certified seeds or, or variety in, in Korea, in South Korea? Is there reg also registered and certified seeds? In your Korea, oh, okay. Yes, there is. Um, do you protect new post service technologies through the uh, IP system? Any IP strategy to share? Uh, uh, this is a proprietary rights uh, thing, intellectual property rights. So are, are your post service technologies uh, should, uh, should be patented or should be copyrighted in order to protect uh, the, the 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 right of the of the, the developer. If the technology uh, can make a, a certain company uh, make big money, then the technology should be protected. But uh, my uh, opinion is uh, we should share the technology to uh, with all uh, uh, customers who want uh, all uh, customers who want to buy the technology because uh, the purpose of post type technology is 
to provide high quality and safe products. Important thing is safe produce. So uh, as long as we are uh, scientists, uh, we have a responsibility to provide, to help providing safe products to all people. So my idea is uh, uh, it is better we share uh, technology to whom, who wants to buy, uh, who wants to adopt the technology. But it depends on the uh, purpose and uh, technique, but in general, uh, it is better we share the technology. So uh, there is uh, a question about uh, how Korea handles the problem of oversupply. I think Dr. Kim uh, just, uh, what is this? Uh, Answered answer that question. Um, what can you say about the crops being ex exported to your country from, for example, our mangoes uh, re with regard to the quality? Have you, have you encountered our mangoes uh, being th there? Uh, have you tasted it? Have you seen it in, your, in the market? I have seen a lot of bananas from the Philippines, even organic banana. <laughs> but uh, mangoes came uh, from Thailand and uh, Philippines. So I didn't recognize from Philippines or mango. It depends on the market. So it is, uh, so I, I'm not sure if I tasted mango uh, from the Philippines because there was no information in the countries. But uh, we know uh, uh, the bananas from uh, Philippines uh, and uh, dragon fruits is from Vietnam, but uh, in Mango's case, many countries. Uh, so uh, I, if I have a chance to discuss uh, about that, I need to discuss with the market people why you don't uh, input the country information for the mangoes. Others, we can get uh, uh, information on the country, but uh, mango, yeah, I need to discuss with them, yeah. Okay, so that's your assignment from us. <laughs> Once you go back to Korea, I think uh, you have to, to go to market, to the various markets and look for man uh, mangoes coming from the Philippines. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. So uh, are there questions from the audience? Some more questions from the audience? Um, okay, so since uh, there are no more questions uh, from our chat, then uh, I think that's all for, for this uh, portion. Thank you very much, Dr. Kim, thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Serrano, for helping us moderate this open forum. And also Dr. Kim for really trying his best to answer all the questions. But at this juncture, we would like to call on the director of the PHTRC to help us present the certificate of appreciation to Dr. Ji Gang Kim. Allow me first to read the certificate. Uh, this certificate of appreciation is awarded to Dr. Ji Gang Kim for sharing his knowledge and expertise as a resource speaker during the PHTRC press talks, PHTRC webinar series episode eight, the role of post-harvest technology in increasing the value of new varieties of vegetables held on 22nd February, 2023 at the PHTRC Annex training room and via Zoom. Given this 22nd day of Feb 2023 at the Post-Harvest Horticulture Training and Research Center, College of Agriculture and Food Science, UP Los Baños, Laguna, signed Dormita Del Carmen, Director PHTRC, and LP Jum Agbisi Jr., Dean, College of Agriculture and Food Science.
Thank you very much. And hindi ko na po upuin si Dr. Del Carmen. <laughs> to draw the program to a close, let us call back Dr. Del Carmen for the for her final remark. <laughs> Closing. Okay, good afternoon, uh, everyone. Uh, first of all, on behalf of the PHTRC, I would like to express my appreciation and big thanks to Dr. Ji Kang Kim for a very comprehensive and uh, insightful presentation on the role of post-harvest technology in increasing the value of new varieties of vegetables. Our sincere gratitude also goes to our college dean, Dr. L. P. Chuagbisit Jr. for gracing this webinar and who is ever supportive of the PHTRC programs and activities. Likewise, I am uh, much grateful to our loyal consultants, our uh, past PHTRC directors, Dr. Edralina Serrano and Dr. Perlita Nuevo for joining us in this uh, webinar. And of course, I would like to thank all our attendees here in this uh, seminar room and via Zoom who took uh, time to be with us. Sabi nga, naandito na siguro din yung mga ka-freshness dati natin. Ano? So, hello, ka-freshness. <laughs> and uh, for actively, of course, for actively participating in the Q&A portion. Okay. Uh, Dr. Kim's uh, presentation has shown that indeed in Korea, varietal improvement and improved post-harvest technologies uh, that are crop, location, situation, and uh, I think it's market specific, are both important in generating value addition in fresh fruits and vegetables. Of course, uh, holding other things equal I mean, in the Philippines, it will also hold true, but there are certain factors, intervening factors that are out beyond our control. So the attainment of supply and demand control uh, cannot be made. Okay. Uh, the importance of uh, collaboration between the breeders and post-harvest technology has been emphasized here. Plus, of course, uh, there are complementary programs, like for example, uh, in making the production system more efficient and responsive to the changing times, especially to climate changes and uh, to the changing market preferences or consumer preferences. So that is being, uh, uh, equally uh, considered in uh, breeding uh, programs in Korea. Okay. So while in the Philippines, uh, there is also similar programs. We are currently implementing similar programs towards improving our breeding uh, production system and post-harvest technologies there is much to be learned from what Korea is doing. And uh, Dr. Kim's presentation, uh, through the, his presentation, we hope that we can uh, fast track and intensify the programs. Of course, uh, this is with adequate funding to RDE. Uh, we need more support from the government. And uh, our research and uh, industry collaboration must also be intensified. So the uh, collaborations between the private, the government, and the academe. 
So it must be uh, pursued or it must be uh, intensified. So I think uh, that's what is, uh, I, I sad to say, still inadequate or lacking in terms of uh, uh, technology development in the Philippines. No? So before I end this uh, uh, remarks, I would like to thank the, our extension committee led by our ever masipag Dr. Deng Maunahan and the, of course the committee members for uh, once again holding another successful webinar. So this is the eighth, the eighth webinar of a uh, freshness series. So uh, at this juncture, I would like to once again thank you all and uh, wish you safe trip home and uh, God bless us all. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Del Carmen. And uh, just a reminder to all the participants, please kindly fill out a graduation form uh, for you to receive your certificates. And uh, for the Zoom participants, the link is shared on your screen and also posted at the comment section. We will, or you may answer the graduation form by scanning the QR code. And we will open the evaluation form until tomorrow. Feb 23 at 5 p.m. and you will receive the certificates after five working days. So for future announcements, please like and follow the official Facebook page of PHDRC. And at this point, we would like to once again extend our uh, sincere gratitude to Dr. Ji Kang Kim for being with us during this face-to-face -face, uh, event, finding time from his visit. Uh, to present a very relevant and enlightening seminar. Thank you very much, sir. Ano sa'yo? <laughs> Mali yata. <laughs> Para hello yata yun. Uh, ano yun? Sarang Hamida. Ah, ano man yun. Thank you, sir. <laughs> and um, we, of course, I would like to reiterate uh, our acknowledgement for the hard work of the men and women behind this webinar series. Itong mga nakikita nyo mga uh, busy busy dito. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Shout out also to the College of Agriculture and Food Science for hosting our webinar online, especially to Ms. Rachel uh, Bautista for the technical assistance. And um, again, yung PHTRC Extension Committee, they're all over, all over <laughs> for helping make this seminar possible. No? And again, thank you to all the attendees, those especially yung mga physically present and yung ating suki sa Zoom. Maraming salamat. And please stay tuned for the next episode of Fresh Talks. So this early, we would like to announce to everyone that we will be hosting one on March 9 as part the, of the foundation, CAPS Foundation, 114th Foundation Celebration. So March 9, we will have a webinar uh, and our guest speaker will be Ms. Arian Aldesa, a Senior um, Program Officer of the Jollibee Group Foundation. She's also an alumna no? from the College of Engineering and Agro-Industrial Technology. And she will be discussing the Farmer Entrepreneurship Program. This is the flagship program of Jollibee, no? the Jollibee Food Company, promoting agro-entrepreneurship for inclusive value chain. So this must be a very interesting uh, seminar for you to um, attend. And it will be at 10 a.m. on March 9. No? So lock off your calendars. This will also be live streamed at the COPS official Facebook page. So see you all. Uh, also those at the Zoom. And again, this has been your host, Deng Maunahan. Until next time. Stay safe, everyone. Maraming salamat po and mabuhay. Yung snacks, may snacks tayo sa likod. Salamat, Miss Daph. <laughs>